Today, I'm gonna to show you guys some awesome ways you can use colors to enhance your photos. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Flurn is the number one site helping you guys to get better at Photoshop and photography. Today is huge. It's contest day. I'm so excited. We're announcing a new contest. We're announcing contest winners. We've got all this kind of stuff here. I'm going to talk about a photo shoot and we're going to be working a lot with color. So before we get into today's episode, I want to talk about our contest winners. Um, first, we had um, Barnulf entered this photo. It's not a photo at all. It's just a giant red square, and I think it's hilarious. So you win a Flurm Pro. <laughs> we do reward comedy here on Flurm because the, the theme for last week's contest was red. Um, Kim entered this photo, which is a really cool image. It's an abstract image of a pencil holder or pencil sharpener, and uh, with some shadows and light and things like that. And we we don't really have a lot of abstract photos uh, entered on Florence. So I thought this was a great opportunity because I love the photo and uh, you guys don't need like models and hair and makeup and all that stuff to produce a great picture. Sometimes it's just a pencil holder. And uh, the last image is Caitlin Cooper. We're going to be editing her image today. And so all these three people win Florin Pros. Just send us an email and we'll send you your Florin Pro. Um, Caitlin wins. This image is really cool um, and it allows us a lot we can do with editing. We're going to do reds and I'm going to talk about complementary colors as well. And my mother's maiden name is Cooper. So we might even be related, but that's not why you won. <laughs> it's a cool image. Okay, before we get into this image, I want to talk about, I want to show you guys some really cool stuff. We've got a shell here. Um, we've got this fabric here. We've got some some moss and some more shells. Uh, can you guys guess what we're gonna be doing with this stuff? Uh, we are doing a mermaid photo shoot this weekend, or this week, we're doing it on Wednesday. It's gonna be awesome. We're turning a person into a mermaid, creating this giant store. We've already created the background, which is amazing, and I can't wait to release it. It's gonna be released as a Florin Pro this month. Also this month, uh, this coming Friday, we're releasing a great Florin Pro. It's gonna be on making your subject look amazing. So be sure to check that out this coming Friday. Oh, and we even have a snaggle tooth horn. Very nice. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get into our image. So this is our image. Uh, Caitlin submitted it and um, I really like it. First of all, it stands out. The, the subject is, it's very engaging. She looks like she's actually doing something. Uh, the hair and makeup looks well thought out. Um, the flowers on top of her head, I, I think are great. And the depth of field are really, the depth of field I think is really good too. Um, but on Flurn, we always fix things as well or make things a little bit better. And I thought today would be a great opportunity to talk about cop complementary colors and um, what we can do to kind of fix that. So complementary colors. I've got a color wheel here. Um, I would recommend picking one of these up. You can order them on Amazon or pick them up at like Michael's or any craft store. Um, complementary colors are a great way to add a little bit more interest to your photo. And uh, I've already got it set to red and the exact opposite of red over here is green. So there's a lot of red in this image. We're gonna tweak the reds a little bit. There's a little magenta. We're gonna bring that back to red again. And then we're gonna be working on adding our greens as well. So I'm gonna show you guys how using complementary colors in your photos can really enhance them and make them pop. If you guys remember the last Athlete Flurn Pro, it had all that blue on there, but then we added that orange and it really made that separation. So that was why we did that. And um, this is you know a really good thing tool to have. So complementary colors, red and green, we're gonna be working with that today. So some of the things I want to just point out really quick that are, um, I think, a little bit distracting. Um, this guy back here just kind of looks like it's sticking out of her head. So we're going to take care of that. Uh, that is what we're going to take care of. And really one of the reasons why I wanted to change some colors is because we have some of these um, like leaves and things like that in front of our model. However, they're desaturated and they're, in my opinion, they're a little bit too close to skin. Uh, you know, this color looks similar to this color here. And it almost looks like she has dirt on her skin. And, um, you know, it, it might not look like that to anyone else, but to me, that kind of looked like she had dirt on her skin. So I was like, well, why don't we just color it? And then we can take that a step further as well. So we're gonna kind of get rid of some of these things and then uh, work on our coloring. So let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot to do. On a new layer, I'm gonna just grab my brush tool and uh, we're gonna get, start by getting rid of some of these distractions. Distractions. Uh, this is not a grammar and speaking class. This is a Photoshop class. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool and uh, we're just going to sample this color right out here. And because it's so soft, I mean, there's, there's no detail in the background. You're really okay just grabbing a brush tool and kind of just painting over the background. What I would recommend is even going a little bit further, like painting on into the flowers and things like that. That's not really that big of a deal um, because what you can do, you'll get a really nice, you know, soft transition there. And then what you can do after that, let's just zoom out and make sure you know, all of it looks very natural. There we go. 
You can just add a layer mask. Just click on your layer mask button right here. There we go. And make a nice small brush and then just kind of like layer mask it around where the actual flower is. So we have, you know, our, um, our transition all the way up to the flowers and it's, it's just, it doesn't like, you know, stop short of, of the flowers. So it's gonna look very natural. There we go. So we've done that side and then we'll just make another layer and this side will be easier because we don't even have to worry about flowers. Um, literally, I'm just holding alter option and sampling this color and painting those. Those are really the only two things that I thought got in the way at all. Um, one of them sticking out of her head and the other one looked like it was a claw attacking her. And I think it's just a little bit cleaner without. Um, you know what, I'm gonna just sample this color and lighten that guy up just a tad. There we go. I still like it there, but I think cleaning it up, but it's a little bit better. Okay, that looks great. So the next thing I wanna do, and a lot of the times with editing photos, guys, it's not about like, you know, making the perfect skin or things like that. It's about drawing attention to the area that you want and drawing attention away from the area that you don't want. And that's really what I try to focus on in my editing. I mean, all the fun, you know, like techniques and things like that, they're all great. Um, but if you can actually enhance uh, the feeling of, the, of an image, that's really what you wanna do. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I wanna click right here where it says master. I don't wanna select all the colors. If you're on master, what it's gonna do is it's gonna change all the colors, okay? So uh, we don't wanna do that. We just wanna choose our reds, or reds or yellows, it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna click on our eyedropper and I wanna click right here on our eyes. And that's actually, it's gonna change this color. Now it's gonna feather out either way, so it might affect the uh, colors that are in the hair as well. Um, but it's gonna focus on selecting this color and changing that. So what I wanna do is drag this just to the right a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit Command I on my layer mask, which is gonna make a inverse of my layer mask, and then we'll just zoom in and we're gonna paint this here. Now, I don't mind so much um, the, the color there. If we were going for a monochromatic um, image, in other words, like where monochromatic is, you know, when you have um, different variations of a red, or you have like red, red orange, orange, yellow, things like that. Usually you wanna include three or four, but I felt like with the red violet here, it was going from red violet all the way to yellow, and that was really too much of a range. So I wanted to bring that red violet back to red, and so that we can focus on this, these values here. Um, and it explains all that right here on the color wheel, which is great. So this, again, it is just because I, I wanna add the green back in there that I think that we could tone down the magenta just a little bit or the red violet okay and I, I think it just matches a little bit better again this is this is my personal preference and just something that I wanted to do this is not something that was uh, quote unquote wrong with the original photo okay the next thing we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna color this thing here we don't have to clone stamp out sometimes a lot of people are you know they really want to clone stamp or they want to just completely get rid of things like this green little bit um, I'm just gonna grab this red color from uh, you know from this rose there or a carnation or whatever it is, and then change the blending mode uh, down here to color. There we go, and we'll just play on there a little bit too. So you can see here, like it, it will just kind of blend in quite a bit better. We don't have to necessarily worry about, you know, d clone stamping this thing out. You just make it the same color as everything else, and it's just like, okay, it's some nondescript detail. Um, there we go. So painting with color, just kind of hid that. And I'll make sure to get the fringes as well. Okay, so we have our reds. Now let's talk about the complementary colors and what we can do with um, you know matching these reds and the greens. Now if you make a new layer, let's just sample this red color here and I'll just paint right over here. If I hit Command I, you can see it's gonna go to like cyan. Um, it's because in our curves, if I go to curves adjustment layer, we have our red channel and the opposite of blue, see red, the opposite of red is cyan in our curves. But notice that it's not the same here on our color wheel. So um, keep that in mind. If you do want complementary colors, um, red and cyan, are, that, that's not gonna get you there. You wanna go with red and green. So um, that's the inverse of the color here in Photoshop is cyan, but you wanna go with green. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna grab some green. And to do this, we can use quite a few different methods. I wanna grab the stuff that's kinda of in front of her. We're gonna color this stuff that's behind her a little bit, and then we're gonna color the image as a whole. So we're gonna to go to our curves adjustment layer, and really all we have to do is go down to our green channel, and then start to pull up a little bit. And 
I don't want a crazy amount of green in here. I really don't. Um, the everything that's in front of you know our model here and all all of the background it's relatively desaturated. Um, so I don't want to you know we don't want to do that because the saturation level won't it won't work. We just want something that's uh, you know going to be understated. Okay, so we've added that green into our image, and you can see already the contrast is nice. Let me hit Command I to invert that layer mask. And then we're going to start painting this in to, to the subject or to our image. So one of the things I wanted to get across today was not necessarily like, you know, oh, this is, you know, you can use curves to add green. Like you guys already know that if you've been watching Flurn for a while. Um, more what I wanted to get across is that doing this sort of thing can actually help to enhance like the tonal depth of your image and, uh, you know, maybe bring something to your image that wasn't there before. Um, and again, this is not my image, so I really don't want to say that it was incomplete without this. Um, just another option. When you guys are editing, if you have a lot of red in your image, if you prefer that, totally cool. Um, but if you want to add, start to add some, you know, complementary colors, you can do that as well. And I think oftentimes um, it helps to make images just a little bit more interesting. You see a lot in art, especially. Um, reds and greens you see a lot of uh, like blues and oranges um, quite a bit of that visible in art there we go okay so by adding this color um, it, it changes the feel of the image quite a bit now I'm not 100% sold on the color so I'm just gonna go into my different color channels and kind of play around with it now that it's kind of masked you can see like you know how much green you want uh, I think it was a little bit too much before. So we'll just kind of tone that back down a little bit and we can add some blue into it. Or if you take blue out, it's going to add more yellow into it as well. There we go. We'll just take a tiny bit out. So not a huge change there, um, but adding that green, let's just take it away from here just a little bit. Adding that green, I think helped add a little bit more of that color depth um, that I was looking for in this photo anyway. Um, and I think it adds some interest. Now we're going to enhance that a little bit. I'm going to go to curves adjustment layer and I actually want to change a couple things here. We're going to change the like the highlight range and the shadow range and it's going to help amplify this as well. So let's go to our red channel. Um, if I click and drag this up, it's going to start to add some red into my shadows. If I drag it to the right, it's going to add some cyan into my shadows. Okay. And at the top, if I click and drag this down, it's going to add cyan into my highlights and to the left is going to add red into my highlights. So we have our red and green already. Now we have the choice of, do we want to add some red into our highlights and green into our shadows or green into our highlights and red into our shadows? Let's just do both and see what we like the best. So let's start off. I'm going to add a little bit of red into our highlights and I'm going to do that by going to our red channel, clicking up here and dragging slightly to the left. There we go. Now we'll go to our green channel and click and drag slightly up. So that's added a little bit of red into the highlights and a little bit of green into the shadows. Let's try another one. We'll go to our curves again, and I'm gonna to go to our red channel again, and this time we're gonna add some red into the shadows, and I can add some green into the highlights. And you can go as far with this as, as you want, by the way. Um, don't feel like you're, you know, you're stuck in one place. You can, you can add a lot of green, you can not add a lot of green. Um, <laughs> either way you do it, I, I think, will totally work out. And these are just varying options. So we'll see kind of what we like. Um, red in the highlights, green in the shadows, or I'm more of a fan of putting a little bit of red of the, in the shadows and green in the highlights. I think that totally works. Um, so that red and green contrast, I think is really starting to read and come through here. Great, now just for total stylization, um, where's our light source coming from, guys? Let's zoom into our eyes to see where our light source is. It's kind of on the horizon here, right? So we can kind of assume that maybe this is towards dusk when this photo was taken. You can see quite a bit of the uh, light in her eyes. We have relatively soft shadows, so we don't have a hard sunlight. And there's not a whole lot of directionality of the sun. I would say, if anything, it's coming more from the left than from the right. But again, not a whole lot. It's just I'm looking a little bit at this side of her face. It's a little bit darker than that side of her face. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a new layer, and I'm just doing this basically just because I like to do this sort of thing. <laughs> I'm going to grab a highlight color and um, I'm just doing this because I want to. So take that. Um, I'm grabbing a highlight color and then just kind of painting right over here um, on top of this 
area there. And that's just gonna add like a lens flare over top of this image. And then um, if you wanna just tone it down a little bit, you can take a, a brush tool. You know, Flurn's about the stylization and doing all kinds of other stuff to your images. It's, you know, I think this sort of thing is fun, fun to do. So it, a subtle little difference, but we already had a soft image. Uh, so I felt like, you know, softening out up just a little bit was a, was a decent addition. Here we go. Let's go ahead and group all those layers together. And uh, let's just look at the before and after. So there's our before. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with this. I think it was just a tiny bit confusing with uh, the reds and the oranges that are in the hair and then the magentas in the eyes. And then it, it was an opportunity to add that green back in there. And there in our after, we've kind of solidified. We, let's take this down a little bit. That was a little overkill. You're like, Aaron, what are you doing? Um, we've kind of brought together all of our red zones. So, you know, we have the reds and the oranges in the hair and then, you know, similar there in the eyes. And then we've introduced that green, which I think helps balance out those reds again. So uh, it's totally just what I thought this image could use, but um, I thought it turned out great. So let's look again the before and the after. Very cool. Guys, this was an awesome contest. I can't wait. Every single Monday we do contests. So I'm gonna about to announce the new contest and it's right in here in our, in our Canon lens hood because it was just laying around and uh, we got a bunch of pieces of paper. So this coming week's contest is self-portrait. Awesome, awesome, awesome contest because I know so many of you guys do self-portraits and this is such a great place to learn. If you guys know, I actually got my start in photography doing self-portraits. I did a 365 project, took a picture of myself every day for a year. I was totally sick of seeing myself after the project, but it got me learning photography and it got me practicing and forced me to do it. So self-portrait guys, get out there. If you don't already have a self-portrait, take one and submit it in a comment below for your chance to win a Flurn Pro, have your image edited on Flurn. If you've already got a sub compact, that I, I don't even know what, I'm if you already have a folder of self-portraits and you have one that's your favorite, submit that one too and you could be a winner guys. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. We got a huge week ahead of us. I'm really excited. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Kind of open your eyes to using complimentary colors and what they can do to your images. Thanks a bunch, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Merman! Merman! <laughs>